This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenome from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Ativo Networks. I'm sitting down right now with Joseph Salazar, who is the technical marketing engineer of the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so now, what are the key challenges in creating a believable deception? So part of what makes deception so effective is how authentic the decoys actually look. Right. So um, one of the key challenges is making the deception so deep that an attacker can't tell the difference between the real production assets mm -hmm. and the decoys that are seated in the network. So something like an emulated honeypot is just, it's just not going to work because mm -hmm. you can only emulate so far. Um, so uh, with, with creating a believable deception, you want to get as deep as possible. So the only thing different would be the data. Okay, and now how unique are each of the decoys that you create? So we provide stock um, images out of the box, but mm -hmm. we can customize them to your heart's content. We can make oh, wow. them uh, run any service, any application because they're full operating systems. Okay. Uh, we can import a golden image that you're using from a production uh, system and use that as the decoy. And then we go even further to make sure that they look authentic by um, uh, in integrating with Active Directory. So we can actually take our decoys and integrate them in an Active Directory, mm -hmm. and then we'll even give you a tool to help and test to see if that d deployment can pass uh, that uh, when an attacker looks for deception. So we uh, have a product called Threat Inject, which is a function that mm -hmm. we can, um, will, you can run to test your deception. So okay. um, when we create the decoys and you customize them to your heart's content mm -hmm. and you can make them look exactly like every other system on the network and then you can test them against Threat Inject to make sure that the deception is believable, we get that deep into the stack. Wow, that's very cool, okay. And now, do you require agents or other endpoint programs to deploy deception? Not really. So no. um, one of the key things that we like to point out is that we are an agentless technology. Okay. So um, our network decoys do a lot of the heavy lifting, and mm -hmm. then we add deception at the endpoints with um, your uh, deception uh, decoys, the lures, mm -hmm. the fake credentials, the ransomware shares. Uh, so we do have an endpoint component, we have a network component, and then we actually do application and data level deception as well so that... Anywhere that an attacker goes, you've got deceptions that can detect them. Okay. And so now, can you talk about some of the interesting attacks you've caught in the wild using your products? Sure. So um, we are actually um, pretty heavily involved in, in conferences. And we have this okay. one conference that we're doing um, where we were in the middle of doing the actual setup. And mm -hmm. we deployed two decoys just to see what was going on. And okay. within about 20 minutes, the Windows decoy got hit with uh, ransomware, WannaCry. What? And within 20 minutes of having the system on the network. And wow. then one of the Linux decoys uh, had an unknown Linux binary dropped in, in as a payload. Okay. Um, and we haven't figured out because there's no uh, virus total uh, signature for it. So we haven't figured out exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so we're doing some analysis on that. But interestingly enough, we've had our customers actually call us and let us know that they've had uh, uh, interesting de detections as well using deception technology. So mm -hmm. we had a healthcare provider that... Um, Noticed some weird uh, PowerShell activity going on one of their decoys, and so okay. they went and checked it out. And it looked like the PowerShell was uh, trying to extract stored Wi-Fi passwords. Huh. So this uh, healthcare provider had a really strict BYOD policy, right? They didn't want just anyone bringing in their system, adding it to the network, and doing whatever mm -hmm. because you know you're dealing with HIPAA compliance. Yep, sensitive and, and material. Exactly, and so um, they did investigation and they traced it to a. Uh, a laptop that was assigned to a contractor. So they went okay. and confronted the contractor and asked him why he was trying to extract yeah. these Wi-Fi passwords because what he ended up actually doing was logging onto a decoy. So he had mm -hmm. done some reconnaissance, which we had detected, and he logged onto a decoy using a, 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 a standard password. Mm -hmm. um, and when they confronted him, he confessed that uh, he was trying to get a laptop onto the network that wasn't compliant with BYOD. And so using that evidence, they terminated him on the spot. <gasps> But wow. this is all because of the detections from our deception technology. And he fell for it. Yeah, absolutely. It was a good I mean, enough decoy then. Exactly. Wow. It looked just like it just looked just like any other workstation on the network. Wow, that's incredible. 
Okay, and so I'm curious now, what anti-deception techniques are hackers using today? So there's a lot of things. There are scripts that are open source scripts that you can use to sort of look for deception. And yeah. what they're really looking for are mismatches with uh, what's stored on the system, what is in memory, and what's an Active Directory, for, okay. particularly for Windows systems. So um, they can query Active Directory for member user networks. Uh, I'm sorry, member user usernames, mm -hmm. uh, member computer accounts, and uh, trusted domains. And so if there are any mismatches in terms of what they find on the decoy mm -hmm. or on the endpoint versus what's actually in Active Directory, they can assume or they can guess that that's probably deception. Mm, okay. But where we, differ where we uh, differentiate ourselves is that we actually integrate with production Active Directory. We can take our decoys and our deception and integrate it directly with production Active Directory so we can add fake users, fake system accounts. Wow. We can even okay. create a full Active Directory environment in our decoy environment and add that as a trusted domain into Active Directory. So we embed very deeply into production. So if an attacker is using any kind of scripts, mm -hmm. we show up as authentic because we're members of the Active Directory um, infrastructure. And then, of course, you can use Threat Inject to help validate that deception deployment to ensure that they can't tell the difference between what's real and what's fake. Okay, very cool. Okay. So now we found one of your products, BotSync, to be really interesting. Can you describe it for me in more technical detail? Sure. So the BotSync is our foundational appliance. Essentially, what it does okay. is it handles the network deception and a lot of the analysis and forensic gathering. Mm -hmm. So all of the network decoys. Um, exists inside the bot sync, and then we can project them across the network through any VLAN, any IP that we want. And even if you don't specifically assign an IP to one of the decoys, mm -hmm. we have a, a function called dynamic deception, where if we have visibility on a VLAN, and then we see attacker activity either through broadcast or multicast traffic, looking like they're um, looking for an uh, unassigned IP address, or they're doing a Ports, uh, a port scan or ping sweep, mm -hmm. we'll actually take that IP, assign it to a decoy, and then respond to the attacker dynamically on the spot. So the, the bot sync is the foundational piece, and then we sort of hang all of the other products on that. So we have the um, threat, in, threat strike, which mm -hmm. is our uh, endpoint deception, and okay. the decoy, those decoy deception uh, credentials point to the decoys on the network so mm -hmm. that if you, an attacker gets on an endpoint and steals the stored credentials, mm -hmm. either by scraping memory with Mimikatz or looking at the credential manager or going on a Mac system looking at the keychain, uh, the, some of those credentials, which just like every other credential, actually point to the network decoys. Okay. And then if you have issues with, say, uh, you have a remote office or a branch office that uh, you want to add deception to, but it's too small for a dedicated appliance, mm -hmm. we actually have a solution for that uh, called ThreatDirect, which is, essentially allows you to scale and project deception to those remote networks or mm -hmm. those branch offices without adding additional uh, bot syncs, and then they just communicate back to that bot oh, sync. Wow, okay. So essentially it forwards all, uh, it allows you to all project data, okay. all that traffic to the to the bot sync that's showing up that could, could potentially be reconnaissance activity or lateral wow. movement or man in the middle attacks okay. at those remote branch offices, which generally don't have the same level of security mm -hmm. that your home office does. And then we add additional, on top of the, the, the bot sync, mm -hmm. we allow you to, uh, orchestrate a lot of response actions. So you know, small companies may not necessarily have a threat orchestration tool or a, a response orchestration tool like Phantom or the Mista or Absolutely, something like that. Yeah. So we offer this ability uh, by leveraging our uh, integrations with our partners. So we have integrations with uh, firewalls, endpoint, uh, endpoint uh, um, solutions, mm -hmm. uh, SIMs, NAC, so that we can respond automatically. And that's one of the things that's really cool about the bot is that you can actually set it up to respond automatically to certain types of attacks. Well, with ThreatOps, you can actually do the entire response activity from detection to investigation to response to remediation, mm -hmm. all from within the bot sync. And then um, most companies who, who have a very mature uh, security platform don't necessarily look for credentials that are exposed in their environment. Mm, so okay. when you have uh, when you have um, an employee leave the company, they mm -hmm. normally turn off their active directory, and, and, and that's usually good, yep. right? Well, not really, because a lot of companies have point-to-point -point credentials. Mm -hmm. They have credentials that are specific for, a spe uh, for a, an application, legacy application that's not managed by active directory, and so they'll create those usernames for that, uh, uh, say, a database, mm -hmm. right? A database administrator has a point-to-point password and login to that uh, database server that's legacy that's not in Active Directory. So if you turn off Active Directory, 
that credential is still there, and that credential can be used by an attacker to move laterally through your environment. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a thing called Threat Path, so a okay. solution called Threat Path, that allows us to look for those stored and exposed credentials that an attacker can use to laterally hop from one system to another. Wow, nice. So you know how uh, a lot of people are lazy and they'll have, if they have to RDP to a server, they'll mm -hmm. store that credential. Mm -hmm. So they can just click on that shortcut and go. Yeah. Well, an attacker can use that stored RDP credential to hop to that server. We identify those exposed credentials mm -hmm. and stored credentials so that you can, at your will, either add additional deceptive credentials to help mask it and protect it and detect when that system gets uh, compromised, or you can go and pull it off the, that uh, system. So the bot sync sits in the middle of this web mm -hmm. of, of uh, deception functionality, and it's the core foundational component. Wow, that's incredible. Okay. And so now I know that you mentioned that you worked with companies of all different sizes. Do you work with all types of companies? Yes. So pretty much it spans all verticals. We have uh, high tech, we have finance, we have um, healthcare, wow, okay. we have uh, sports. So what? We, nice. yes, we actually do sports. Um, uh, petrochemical, ener energy, government. Wow, uh, everything. everything okay. Everyone who has something that is sensitive enough that if an attacker gets past the, the, the perimeter, mm -hmm. they'll be concerned, we, we work with those companies. Okay. And so now I know you're also covering embedded devices such as IoT, POS, and IC, ICS SCADA. How does your product work with these technologies? I know emulating them must be tough. So we actually don't emulate. Oh, okay. So How does we, it work? Run, we, we actually will run full operating systems. There's a few, there's a few things that we may do a small level of emulation, but generally what we do is we'll run full protocols for something like uh, PLC or Siemens or one of those ICS okay. uh, controllers, or we'll run uh, the image for a drug infusion pump uh, in medical devices, or we'll run the actual full operating system for a point of sale device um, or a point of sale gateway. So we do full stack, and we don't emulate, we wow, run okay. the actual full operating systems inside our environment and all the protocols that are associated. So if an attacker is going through an, an uh, ICS SCADA or an operational technology network, mm -hmm will look like an HMI or a, or a controller or a sensor, and we actually have companies that are using us in the field on their um, in their SCADA networks uh -huh. to do SCADA deception. Wow, okay, that's very cool, nice. Yeah. So we don't emulate. Got it, okay. And so lastly, are there any other interesting aspects of your product line which you would like to highlight? So um, well, there are always new features that we're adding. Uh, we have a very, very robust roadmap. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very strong engineering team. Um, and but a lot of it is the the customers ask for integrations with partners, okay. and so that's one of the things that we do is we will um, try to get those integrations working uh, with the partners. So we'll add more blocking solutions, we'll add more firewalls, we'll add more SIMs. Uh, we're adding uh, more threat intelligence vendors okay. and, and everything in the entire stack. So the idea behind deception is that we don't try to displace any technology. Mm -hmm. We try to add functionality by giving most of your protective and, and, and security uh, solutions in, internal visibility, which is something that a lot of companies lack. Mm -hmm. So they're very good with north-south traffic, right? Yeah. That's what their firewalls, their, their IDS is, their perimeter defenses, that's what they're for. Mm -hmm. When it, when it comes to east-west traffic, this data center talking to this system, they don't have any visibility into that, which is why an attacker can go through and take their time moving around mm -hmm. so that your average dwell time for an attacker behind a network is 99 days. Wow. Right? So Equifax yeah. was something like 75, and that's still 75 days too long. Yeah. So what Deception tries to do is add that visibility to your existing solutions so you can respond in a quicker manner to an attack when it's an attacker gets past the perimeter. So for us, it's all about adding additional partners and mm -hmm. adding functionality that we feel is necessary, like our uh, Honey Docs function that we're adding, which will allow you to embed beaconing technology to any production, uh, uh, any production document that you can put anywhere, and if it gets stolen, it'll phone home and let you know when it's been opened. Wow, okay, right? so, cool. So we, we're adding, constantly adding functionality, mm -hmm. and so uh, when it comes to new features, it's basically check back next quarter, we'll probably add a bunch more. Yep. Wow, wonderful. Joseph, thank you so much for speaking with Absolutely. me today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, that's all the time we have for today, and make sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. 
Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.